Hey everybody, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome to a video series where I showcase what I found to be the best in slot min-max build for one of the 12 Midnight Suns heroes. I will also give a quick review of all the hero abilities to show what other potential fun build options the hero may have, or reveal the thought process that ultimately led me to the one and only best choice to min-max said hero. Once we have given an overview of the hero, I will give a tier list rating in direct comparison to the other 12 heroes. We'll also mention what battle items and heroes synergize best with this build. This is a one of 12 part series. If you end up finding this video informative or helpful in any ways, please check the video description for a full playlist of my series for Midnight Suns. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's get into today's hero. I was saving the best for last. Well, at least my personal favorite hero in the Midnight Suns, that being Carol Danvers, or better known as Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel is the first hero that you unlock during the campaign, and she's also the first tank introduced to you in the game. While her initial core design is intended to be that of an actual tank, which gives you a tanky hero to help assist taking damage up until you unlock Captain America in the mid game, most people would argue that Captain Marvel feels more like a damage dealer in design than she does an actual tank. And that is because of her binary mechanic. Marvel has a unique mechanic that once she plays three of her own cards, she draws a card called binary. When she activates binary form, all of her abilities do double damage, turning her into a monster damage dealer, as most of her cards are initially really good, even without binary activated. The downside to binary, however, soon as Marvel loses her shields, she also loses her binary, meaning that if you do play her as a tank, there is a chance you will lose binary and also lose her damage potential. And because you acquire Marvel so early in the game, most players don't have a good understanding of upgrading abilities or modding abilities, and they tend to struggle with the balancing act of allowing Marvel to both tank effectively while also dishing out damage. As I've mentioned time and time again throughout this series, the motto of the game is to kill enemies in the fewest turns possible, and dead enemies don't deal damage. Meaning in the very late game on Ultimate 3 level 40 missions, you won't even need a tank in the hardest and most dire of situations, meaning you could completely and 100% focus on making Marvel shine as a DPS. And because of binary, strengthened, overpowered, and many stackable effects like this, with a bit of investment, Marvel is arguably the hardest hitting damage dealer in the entire game. In the case the game was actually harder and you needed to play Marvel as a tank, she is hypothetically the best tank in the game, even better than Captain America, with the right setup, of course. And that is because she gains stacks of resist, meaning she takes zero damage upon getting hit, something Captain cannot do. But again, since tanking isn't required at all to excel in this game, we can forget about the tank debate altogether and instead focus on Marvel's damage here in today's video. So talking a bit about her tier list ranking compared to the other heroes, without upgrades or mods, her base kit is very powerful and in the early and mid game, she serves both as a great damage dealer and as a pretty good tank. So I put her in the A tier just below Captain America. Captain provides more support with his card draws and his default kit starts him off as the better tank of the two. Once she has mods, she remains a very powerful and technically stays where she is at the A tier, one below Captain America. However, if I could make a third tier list that talked about solely in investment, Captain Marvel technically scales infinitely more valuable each and every level at a much more rapid rate than every other hero because of her binary mechanic. For example, every hero's cards get stronger every level due to your offense increasing and cards damage is based off your offense. Captain Marvel basically gains double the offense every level because binary doubles her damage 
and it's multiplicative with effects like strengthened and overpowered, meaning she gets more value from every level and every buff, more so than any other hero in the game. So in theory, she is a very strong A tier hero, but once invested in, she slowly climbs further and further ahead of every hero I placed above her in my tier list, until she inevitably is the hardest hitting character in the game. But this is only the case if you endlessly grind out levels on her and without enough content in this game to for that to even matter chances are people won't even ever truly unlock her max potential but it's important to mention it here because she is technically the highest potential in the game but placing her in the top of the s tier is only fair if we're assuming players are grinding endlessly which is more unlikely so my tier rating is assuming you mod her with my build but keep her at champion level one with all that said my tier list ranking for her is fair when approaching her from an unbiased and limited grind outlook i just wanted you guys to know that she's tactically god tier when you start to invest all that aside she quickly became my personal favorite hero in the game simply out of the way that they designed her personality her look her skins and her overall kit playing around the power of the binary state. So I'm glad she turned out to be as powerful as she can be because she quickly became my favorite hero early on when I was playing through the game. So let's get into my Captain Marvel build starting with her hero profile. All right, let's start off by taking a look at my hero profile. What I really wanted to do for this video was to uh, get her to champion level 100 and then get footage for that. Uh, but I kind of burnt myself out. I only got to champion level 59, which is fairly quite high. Uh, she's been on 69 missions. Nice. Uh, 19 activities, 19 gifts. I've done all the rigmarole. She's friendship level 46. And I've gotten a good use out of a lot of her abilities, as you can see from the list there. And she's KO'd 700 enemies. That is quite a lot. Captain Marvel can definitely, definitely dish it out. Um, even just a comparison to like uh, Scarlet Witch, who's level 123. On her hero profile, she's only KO'd 380 enemies. And even Iron Man, which I consider to be the most overpowered hero in the game uh, by far, he's got uh, 90 champion levels and he's only KO'd 670. So if we go back to uh, Captain Marvel here, she's KO'd more enemies than Iron Man and she has less champions and been on less missions than Iron Man. Kind of proving the point that she kills more enemies than any other character in the game when played right with the right build and with the right circumstances uh, she's an absolute killing machine and a beast and the reason i wanted to try to get to champion level 100 is because i believe that is the critical mass point of which she basically one shots anything in the game with any ability once she's hit binary and i still want to see that i still want to achieve that but unfortunately i'm starting to burn myself out on the game and uh we have the venom dlc coming out at the time of this recording i think tomorrow so uh i'm definitely gonna you know switch my train of thought over to that that character anyways so first thing we always do is we take a look at the hero passive on ko 20 percent chance to gain one counter and it's limited to once per turn i guess it's okay it's nothing special uh if if she is focusing on building up to her binary state then she has uh she's going to be killing two three four enemies anyways on her first turn there's a good chance this will proc but she probably doesn't need the counter because everything's probably just going to die anyways and she does have abilities that give her counter regardless so i don't know i think uh, uh, focusing more on her ability to tank early on in the game. I think this should have been a 20% chance to gain one stack of resist. And I think that would have made her just like a cooler tank and a cooler hero overall. That's the direction I would have gone with it. But I really want to lean into her stats here and her, you know, her health, her offense and her, her overall stats and what, what I've gone into. Just talk about the reason why she's technically the most highest potential skill ceiling character with enough investment. So right now she has 170 offense. The moment we go binary, that's going to be 340 offense. It doubles. So every time she gains a champion level, you get one point of offense. And then that 
it has a multiplier that's going to increase the strength of certain uh, damage ability cards. So some ability cards will get stronger by 5, 10, 15 points of damage for every one offense gained on the hero because it's multiplied by your offense. Uh, some ability cards might just go up by one damage every time she gains an offense. But the nice thing about Captain Marvel is the fact that every time she levels up, she's technically gaining two offense because when she goes binary, it doubles. And that just gives her much more of a multiplier. Then you can give her an overpower buff, which gives her another 100%. And then you can give her strengthen, which gives her another 200 and uh, or another 50%, bringing her up to 250% offense. 169 times 250% is going to be 422 offense. <laughs> 422 offense is just ridiculous. If we go to my strongest character in the game, which is Hunter, champion level 300, she has 430 offense. So right now, currently with the right battle items played, once we get binary and once we do that, Captain Marvel is achieving that of a champion who is champion level 303. So you could imagine that if we got Captain Marvel to say champion level 100, she's that of the strength of a hero that is, you know, champion level 400 or something like that. And it, without battle items and without strengthened, just taking into consideration her binary effect, if you get her to champion level 100, she's that equivalent strength of a champion that's at level 200. So she's basically twice as strong in champion levels than every other hero because of her binary status. And that's why I was saying if you get her to champion level 100 and then we, you know, get binary, now she's at 200 and we give her overpowered or we give her strength and there's a good chance that most of her abilities, if not all of her abilities, um, even quick jab has a potential of KOing any, any enemy on the battlefield uh, with a single hit making her just an absolute beast so with investment she is the best hero in the game but the, the, unfortunately there's really no reason to get a hero to champion level 100 you're just grinding that end game going to new game plus or whatever i guess she'll be insanely strong um, but she's gonna lose all of these stats because new game plus nukes a lot of your your stats so talking more about her stats crit chance crit damage at 50 and 75 those are the caps those are absolutely what you're gonna want to increase the opportunity of getting crit critical chance because as we spoke about our offense our offense once we increase the damage of something by 75 percent that's adding to the multiplier that we already uh, said that you'd be 250 percent and then we're you know doubling that by almost we're almost doubling that by adding 75 percent uh multiplier to what is already 250 so you can imagine if you're pulling a card that does 1500 damage and then you're doubling it that's almost 3000 damage that's going to ko anything in the game by far so you know you could even take battle items that guarantee you uh they all the cards in your hand are crits that's another option if you really want to uh you know push her limits talking about her other sets pretty much everything is good on her the fortitude is great especially like early mid game just to give her that extra a bit of shield so that you know we can if we do get hit and we don't kill everything on the map she can take a hit because she has that shield built up when she goes binary she gains a bunch of shield as well so our shield based on our level she's going to start with about 500 and she's going to add a bunch with binary probably bringing her to the max meaning she can uh physically take one or two hits before she uh loses her shield and therefore loses her binary but there, there are certain builds and I'm going to show you two builds. Ignore what you see on the left hand side, what's in my deck, because I do switch her cards up and I've done some experimentation on her that is quite interesting. And there's definitely two builds I run depending on the supports that I bring. So power is also extremely important because we're going to increase the area of effect of our supernova and our photon beams. Uh, resilience is good to resist negative status effects if she is going to tank a hit. And she does have knockbacks with her quick jab once she's gone binary. So that's also going to increase the knockback distance and uh, willpower just to recover health. You probably don't need that, but mine just happens to be max because I've played her a lot. So let's talk about my build. Starting with Cosmic Ray, um, there's there's a few, well, I guess we could go into uh, like what my experimentations are on her. You can see like I've modded a whole bunch of different cards with her and m messed around with a bunch of different things. I've even tried making her a mark support before, but you guys from watching this series by now, you would know that I don't like apply one mark because one mark decays uh, and then you lose it by the next turn. And uh, you know, you only find it viable if you can do apply two marked like you can on spider-man he's the only character in the game that can get aoe 
apply to Mark, making him super viable as a Mark support. But yes, I've messed around with a lot of different things on her. And most recently, I played around with Cosmic Ray. And the reason Cosmic Ray is actually a quite a nice card is you can get the plus 50% damage mod on it, which I have here. It's 50% based off her offense. If she has 170 offense, that's going to be what, 85 um, damage added to this card, which basically brought this card, it, it doubled the damage of this card effectively. Now we go binary and it goes from 170 damage to 340 damage. We had strengthened, now we're in the 400 ranges. If the target is targeting Captain Marvel, it does bonus damage, and I think that bonus damage is also multiplied by the fact that she went binary or gained strengthened as well. So Cosmic Ray could actually do like a tremendous amounts of damage, and it's a it's a nice kind of a heroism building damage dealing card. Um, and I'll only run these three cards: Quick Jab, Quick Jab, Cosmic Ray, when I have a Mark support on the team. And my Quick Jab, speaking on that, it get, on KO you gain one strengthened, and I find it really important to try to build up her strengthened as soon as possible and we also use our quick jab to start to build up our binary. Take out a minion, get a strengthen. Take out a minion, gain a strengthen. I like having two in the card because if you only have one and you're not getting that strengthened, she might not have that power or that umph. Now, speaking on once we get her to champion level 100, 200 plus, once she's super, super powerful, you might not even rely on building that strengthened. And what I would recommend doing is taking out these quick jabs or just maybe just having the one and you can focus on having double cosmic rays because she's already basically KOing things so easily. So that is an option. Or what you could do is change it so that the mod on the quick jab draws one of her cards, giving her more card draw potential, because that is one of the things that she lacks. She does use quite a bit of heroism. She doesn't generate that much heroism, and she doesn't have the best card draw potential other than her one step ahead card. So what I would do, this is like my DPS build if you're running with Scarlet Witch, Iron Man, Blade, Spider-Man, anyone that's a Mark support specialist, this is what I would play. Now, if you want to play her with Doctor Strange to give her the ability to use battle items that make her even stronger, which is the really going to take her to her max potential, I like to swap out and put in Bring It On instead of Cosmic Ray. And in some cases, probably even have a second Bring It On instead of uh, a Quick Jab. And that way you have the ability to taunt lots and lots of enemies. This is a free card. It taunts each enemy in an area and it gains her counter. And if she's binary, she gains that two resist. That two resist is what makes her technically better than Captain America in tanking potential if you're using this in the mid and early game. Basically, what people don't realize is resist stack, and they only decay when they get hit. So let's just say you built up four stacks of resist. That means she could take four hits without taking damage. She just completely negates them. And chances are you're, there's not going to be four enemies on the map to even hit you, so she'll completely take zero damage on her turn, and she will counterattack, dealing massive damage because she is in bio and her offense is so high, she's going to return a whole lot of damage to the enemies. The more you're using Bring It On, the more stacks of resist you're building, and basically she's, she's invincible. She cannot take damage. Um, that's what makes her like a really good tank. So if you want to go in the tank direction, two Bring It Ons is really good. But what's most important about this is taunting each enemy in an area, and we have that big giant AoE with a, uh, upgraded power from our, our stats. You're going to group up a bunch of enemies. They all have their attention on her, and from there, you could use a battle item to apply two mark to all taunted enemies not to mention our photon beam also taunts enemies so it depends on how you feel like you're taunting them or not uh, I, you can go with one or you can go with two and it's really you know how you feel things are working out depends on the supports you have in your team do they have draw card potential if they don't have draw card potential you might want two quick jabs just to ensure that you're getting those quick jabs to build that strengthened and you're able to take out those little minions to build that strengthened um and if you have great card draw potential you're going to come across the, just the one quick jab in your deck if you're just running one. So another thing that's really great about Bring It On is you can use it to line up your photon beam. Photon beam can only be used in a certain direction based off where she's standing. It's a line from where she's standing. You can use bring it on to reposition her. It's a free move. So you can line her up wherever you want using bring it on. And it's basically a mobility card to line up your photon beam. And that's why I like running it. Plus you could use it to uh, taunt all the enemies and then mark them. And that's why I suggested running two of them just so you could taunt them and also use your extra bring it on as as the uh, the mobility card. Now, speaking of one step ahead, draw Marvel cards until you have four in your hands. This is obviously like really good if she doesn't have 
anything in our hand but this. One thing to note with this is if it's like the third card you play that would normally make you go binary, you're going to draw a binary card. And that binary card is going to count as one of those four cards in your hand. So you don't really ever want to play this as the third card if you if she's about to go binary. You want to use it before then or after then. So if you have a bunch of her cards in your hand, try to use them all until this is the last thing remaining, then pop this and refill her hand up. And the nice mod that I put on this is the uh, plus two heroine making this a plus four heroism generator. And if you have a hunter that runs a call to arms, that's going to double the amount of heroism generated. And this will be a plus eight heroism. And that basically fills you up to full heroism, allowing you to play all of your uh, heroic cards. Now, in the case that your hunter or your other support, like your Doctor Strange, has really good card draw, you in theory don't even need one step ahead. It might just get in your way. So what you could do is actually run double quick jab, double bring it on. And this is going to allow her to taunt, reposition, build up her strength and quick jab actually gets insanely strong once she has overpower strengthened binary um this uh, and then you pull this as a crit as well i've seen quick jab hit like six to eight hundred damage it's really quite nuts and once we're you know champion level 100 it's it could pretty much almost one shot anything becoming one of the strongest quick jab abilities in the game with all the multipliers that you could put on captain marvel i want to jump ahead to photon beam real quick uh one thing i didn't mention with the cosmic ray the reason I put plus 50% damage on Cosmic Ray and Photon Beam here, that that's 50% based off your offense, right? So our offense being 170, we're adding like 85 damage to this card. So it's bringing this card's damage potential up by like 50% currently. Anything that you put plus 50% damage on for Captain Marvel, including Supernova, which we'll take a look at in a second, all of those cards, uh, they multiply so much faster because you got to remember, she's gaining two offense every time she levels because of her binary state. So while this says it does 300 damage, the moment we go binary, it's going to do 600 damage. We pull it as a crit and it's doing 1200 damage. We give her strengthened and it's even more. Um, it, this photon beam can quickly hit for 2000 plus damage, if not 3000, meaning anything you pointed at will vaporize on the map. And that 50% strengthened, it's just going to go up and up and up and up because she's basically gaining two offense every single level. So anything with plus 50% damage mod is going to see like twice the amount of results as than being on any other hero in the game because of her binary status. And that's why Cosmic Ray is such a nice card because it can get that 50% damage and same with Photon Beam. And this being an AoE is absolutely insane. And that's why I run two Photon Beams put plus 50% damage on it. Next up, I like Fist of Radiance. You could uh, technically, if you really want to, you could run a Reign of Blows instead. I want to talk about Reign of Blows real quick because I have seen a lot of people talk about this card on Reddit. They hate it. <laughs> so uh, I've tried two different mods on ko gain uh block and it's gain block based off of a hundred percent of your offense that's what the mod is called super long-winded mod uh it's yeah gain block based on a hundred percent of your offense but there's two there's just gain block and then there's on ko gain block i have a quick clip i want to show you guys here where i use reign of blows So now that you've seen that clip, you can see that Reign of Blows, the downside to this card is it, it, it consumes all of your heroism to do damage, but it consumes your block. The one mechanic with um, binary is if you lose your block entirely, you lose binary. But this card gives you block based off your offense and she will maintain and not lose her binary status. And I have tried uh, both of these and they both work. So whether it's on KO or it's just gain block, they will both retain the binary status. So obviously the better choice is to gain the block in the chance that this doesn't actually KO the target. You'll still uh, keep your binary even without the KO. So that is the better mod of the two if you want to go with Reign of Blows. The downside to Reign of Blows, how however, is it can consume all of your heroism. Unless you're playing a hunter that has Inspire, change the cost of a random heroic card in your hand to zero and it's free and draws the last attack played. If you 
pop a couple of these and they land on Rain of Blows, it now costs zero. It won't consume all the heroism, but it'll use it at full power. So Rain of Blows is definitely viable and it hits hard, but I find it to be so situational and it relies on having either Hunter or Nico on your team to reduce its cost. Otherwise, it's just going to chew up all of your heroism and that's not great. Um, and it's, it's kind of unreliable. So Fists of Radiance is the better option of the two, even though Rain of Blows is an epic card. I like just putting quick on this. Yeah, like you could increase its damage, but this one you can't increase its damage by 50%. It only caps out at 25%. A lot of the heroic single target damage cards, they can only be modded to do plus 25% damage. So it's a little bit lackluster in that sense. Um, you can go with the plus 25% damage if you really want to maximize damage, but I found a lot of use out of this where I draw it early and I, I just use it to uh, kill a minion or, you know, knock back a big guy into a minion. That way it guarantees gets the kill and then you get the quick draw uh you get the quick triggered give you the card refund and then because it ko'd a minion you get to draw another one of her cards this allows her to build up to binary but then once you are binary you have your strengthened and you have your overpower all that stuff fist of radiance becomes a monstrous damage dealing card later on so it scales really well um but the quick effect allows you to use it early on to build up to binary and uh help you with the card draw as well so i definitely really like fist of radiance and prefer it over rain of blows and last but not least we have our super nova my mod for this is also plus 50 percent damage damage each enemy in an area increased area of effect and the nice thing about this card it is one of the few cards in the game i think one of two legendary cards there's yeah only a couple of all the heroes in the game that this doesn't have exhaust on it. Most of the legendaries you can only use once per combat. This just goes back into your, your discard pile. So you could draw a supernova multiple times in, in, a, in a session. And that's why running one step ahead is nice because if you're drawing four of her cards again, refilling your hand, you might get another supernova. Now by default, this card's pretty lackluster, especially in the early and mid game. You might get this go like that didn't really do much. It didn't feel like a supernova. But again, once we have the 50% strength and mod on there, we go binary. This is going to go up to 500 damage we draw a crit on it now it's a thousand damage we add strength and it's 1500 damage and uh if you put overpower it's like 3000 damage you, you could just really get this thing to like annihilate the entire map uh, i've had situations where it's super powerful but those are where all the stars align and all the circumstances are you know you know everything has pumped her up to the strongest she can be but if we're just like farming her and building her levels up this thing is just getting exponentially stronger every time she levels so definitely yeah it feels a little bit of a dud early on and it's it's just doing chip damage to a whole bunch of area enemies in an area like i said once we get that 50 percent damage mod binary strengthened uh crit then this thing is just a, a map wiper and i've had it hit, be just as effective if not more effective than an incredible halts world breaker which is an exhaust card so yeah, Captain Marvel is absolutely amazing and, and has a ton of potential. So why don't we head over to the Forge to talk about some of the cards that we didn't put in her deck that we didn't review. So Knee Strike uh, upgraded. This just does more damage. I know a lot of people like this card uh, for whatever reason. They You can put Quick on it and then, you know, you, you're doing a bunch of damage. That damage is translated into block for her and it helps her build up her block. But again, with my, uh, my point is if your Fortitude's high enough and you're going binary, you're getting tons of block from that already. Uh, the fact that she's building up uh resist stacks with bring it on she won't take any damage why do you need block if you're not taking damage you're not going to take damage if everything is dead therefore knee strike isn't that great and uh you can't you can't you need to mod this as quick and uh it doesn't do nearly as much damage as cosmic ray does especially if they're targeting her and they will be targeting her if we're using bring it on photon beam to taunt them so they're all going to have their attention on her which means cosmic ray just does more damage than knee strike and we don't need the block from knee strike so early in mid game, this might seem like a compelling card to run in your deck. And I definitely did use it early on. Um, but in the late game, it's t uh, completely unnecessary. And we, we did talk about Rain of Bro Blows briefly, so we could skip that. And the last card is Regroup Upgraded. This just recovers health. So this gains block and recovers health. I don't know a world where you would ever use this. Honestly, they should just combine Regroup with One Step Ahead. When you use One Step Ahead, it should just give you health and block because why not? It wouldn't be that overpowered. Uh, the card, it, yeah. Uh, this card on its own is completely trash in my opinion because 250 block isn't even like a half the damage that you take from an, a minion a de uh, yeah, it's like minions are hitting you for four or five hundred in this game on ultimate three level 40 difficulty so 
uh, it's such a minimal amount to block. It's less block than she gets from Fortitude, and it's less block that she gets from even Knee Strike. It's less block that she gets from uh, uh, going binary. So I was like, yeah, why would you use this card? It seems so bad. It needs some kind of card draw effect on it. But the nice thing is because it doesn't have card draw, you can mod it to be free. So I guess, you know, that's a thing. You can make it free. Um, but there's just so many better options for her. Now talking about the best combat items to run, um, definitely like running a utility belt so you can draw two of her cards, just enforcing that you're gonna pull that quick jab or that one step ahead so that you could start pulling more cards and just building up her uh, her deck size. I also definitely like running a um, overdrive serum, just in the case that you don't have enough heroism to play her photon beam or her supernova or anything like that. You can pop an overdrive serum, fill up your heroism and you're good to go. Now, if you're playing with Doctor Strange doing the taunt, mark build you're gonna need an evil eye totem select a hero apply two mark to all enemies targeting them so if we're going bring it on bring it on taunting all the enemies using photon beam to ta taunt enemies then we can apply a mark to all of them meaning every single ability that we use from her she's gonna get the card play refund with and that is freaking amazing making her a mark support hero um, with the help of dr strange because he can rev you can bring back this item so that you could use it on the next turn you could use it on the next wave of enemies but generally speaking if it's a, a, a one turn mission where you can just annihilate all the enemies on the first turn. You don't need to break Doctor Strange because you don't need to refund this battle item because this battle item is cheap to craft at the uh, combat item crafting station. Now, the big juicy one, if you are bringing Doctor Strange and you only will ever bring a major strength tonic if you're bringing Doctor Strange because the major strength tonic can only be crafted at the cauldron and it's a very, very expensive item to craft. You're going to want the, the card back because you, you have a finite amount of resources to craft these. Um, select a hero, they gain one overpowered and one one vulnerable she has a 60 percent chance to resist that overpowered is the same effect as binary it increases your offense by 100 percent and it stacks with binary and it stacks with strength and that'll bring her up to 250 percent more offense and this is where she becomes just a god um, now you use dr strange to bring back the major strength tonic and you won't have to worry about losing it so if you are bringing strange you want to go with the taunt route you're going to taunt everybody with bring it on or your photon beam then you're going to apply two mark to all the enemies. Um, and before you do all that, you're going to pop a major strength tonic. And then, you know, she's got the strength to just start annihilating everything. She goes binary and she gets even more. Then Doctor Strange has a chance to return all these battle items. And then she could just go ahead and nuke everything on the map and win the mission. <laughs> so speaking on heroes that she plays best with, obviously, as I just mentioned, if you're playing that one build using Bring It On, Doctor Strange is going to be your go-to best buddy just to make her easy even stronger you getting that overpowered uh, battle item buff and uh, obviously pairing that with hunter as well is going to be your ultimate team combo but you want to farm more missions you want to bring her either you want her to have as many opportunities as possible to go on other missions with other heroes she does pair well with other mark supports so we're talking about blade iron man scarlet witch is my personal favorite and if you've done my spider-man mark support build from my previous uh spider-man build in this series she also pairs really well with spider-man those are going to be all the go-to's because they can mark and then she can get the card play refunds and just start uh, abolishing everything. Now, there's an argument to be said that she can pair well with Nico as well. That that's always an option there. But pretty much all the other damage dealers in the game, like Wolverine, Magic, uh, Ghost Rider, Captain America, Hulk, they're going to pair best with supports. And if you're bringing too many DPS, you know, there's never a chance that Captain Marvel's gonna pop off because she needs to play as many cards as possible to build her binary status. And once she does go binary, there's a good chance she's gonna be doing more damage than those other DPS that you brought, meaning you're not gonna want to use their cards. You're gonna want to use hers and they're not technically not really doing anything. So you're not really bringing them for any purpose. So yeah, unfortunately she doesn't pair well with every hero in the game, but she pairs well with every support in the game. So having like five to six supports in the game, that's a good amount amount of missions that you can bring her on including her own missions being a sixth or a seventh mission you know she has plenty of opportunities to just go on crazy amounts of farming missions and just keep building up those champion levels if you want to push her into godlyhood so maybe one day i will get my uh <laughs> captain marvel to champion level 100 maybe i could do an updated like sizzle reel 
showing you um, that I can one-shot every single enemy in the game with uh, without even using battle items like the overpower buff and just straight up going binary and deleting everything on the map. Uh, I want to figure out what that sweet spot is. What is that champion level where she can one-shot anyone with a photon beam? Just having binary and just having strengthen from her quick uh, quick jab. It'd be really interesting to see what that, that comfort spot is, what level I actually have to get her to to achieve that. But the, the point and the moral of the story is she will get there and achieve that much much sooner than any of the other heroes for like captain america or ghost rider or spider-man or any other hero that's like a damage dealer to actually one shot like a a, a villain or a boss or one of those big guys with 2000 plus hp they're gonna have to hit champion level like 300 400 plus and that's just gonna take forever and it's just not worth it so uh you can get there much quicker on a captain marvel and i want to see exactly what that break point is uh, unfortunately that's going to take a lot of grinding it's going to take a lot of missions as i can only gain like one or two levels a mission so i'm going to have to grind out like 20 to 40 more missions to even find out what that sweet spot is but i still kind of want to do it because i love the hero so much i had so much fun playing her i like her as a hero in the story um she's just really great so if i ever get there and i actually find that sweet spot uh, i'll definitely make like an updated sizzle reel just showing me just doming all the enemies on the map with like one ability um that would be pretty sweet boom but there it is ladies and gentlemen that's my captain marvel build or two build variations uh this is the 12th video of the 12 part series that i said that i was going to do and i i promised that i would do 12 of the series this is the 12th character the 12th hero the 12th video of the series so i've officially concluded and uh delivered on what i promised you know you guys have seemed to be pretty receptive and positive even though these videos don't get the most amount of views because the game's not the most popular popular uh, and that sort of thing uh, you guys have been really great in the comments down below and you know if there's a thousand plus people out there getting enjoyment from my builds I still think it's worth it at the end of the day even though there's no monetary gain at all I'm just sharing my knowledge for the sake of it and uh, you know putting that time in to to share that with you guys and if it's helping you then it makes me feel good and I don't mind uh, doing a little bit of work to um, help you guys out if it brings you some sort of joy so I appreciate you guys with the comments and uh, it seems to me like you guys want more. So I have prepared. I did it. Uh, as you guys can see here, Deadpool, we're taking a look at him here. I got him to champion level 24, friendship level 6, and I maxed out and modded pretty much every single one of his abilities. So that will be coming up. We're going to do a Deadpool DLC uh, coverage. And at the time of me recording this Captain Marvel video, Venom is dropping tomorrow. So well, Venom is my all-time favorite hero in the Marvel Universe or anti-hero, however you want to say it. Uh, so I'm pretty stoked about him. And if as long as there's no bugs or game-breaking issues or lackluster skills, uh, I'll definitely be covering him with a video as well. And if you guys still want to see my Hunter build, I know a few people have been mentioning that. Leave a comment in the down below. Tell me that you want to see my Hunter review and maybe we'll get to doing that as well. Boom, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's my 12 part series. That is the final 12th hero, Captain Marvel. What did you guys think? Fire away down in the comments below. And we're gonna have a bonus special episode coming up the 13th of the series for Deadpool. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy that. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.